Hello and welcome to FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City of Greensboro's Minority and Women's Business Enterprise, or MWBE, office is hosting several events to commemorate the fourth annual Minority Enterprise Development, or MedWeek. Activities take place the week of September 24th and are open to the public. There will be networking opportunities, workshops, and an awards dinner. The full list of activities is available on the MedWeek website. Most events are free and require advance registration. The awards dinner will recognize minority and women-owned businesses who have demonstrated leadership and commitment to advancing MWBE firms in the Greensboro marketplace. MedWeek is organized by members of the Greensboro MedWeek Committee, which includes representatives from Guilford County Schools, the City of Greensboro, Guilford County, North Carolina A&T State University, and the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. The purpose of National MedWeek, which is celebrated by municipalities across the country and other public agencies, is to provide business development opportunities to firms and celebrate the accomplishments of minority and women businesses enterprises during the past year. For more information, call the city's MWBE office at 336-373-2674. The Greensboro Police Department says online classified ads are growing in popularity for legitimate buyers, sellers, as well as criminals who have no intention of buying or selling anything. For sellers, the ads, which are usually free, can reach a wide audience in a short period of time. For buyers, online ads allow them to find an assortment of items and compare prices. For criminals, finding ads posted on sites such as Craigslist, Let Go, and Offer Up provide another means for them to commit crimes. They use these online ads as a way to lure people who have money or property worth stealing. Criminals know buyers will likely show up with cash, which makes them an easy target. Because of the risks involved with these transactions, Greensboro Police continue to encourage people to make the exchange at a police station or a trusted public place. Police recommend for you to arrive at the meeting place before the other person so you can observe their behavior. Bring someone with you or let someone know where you're going and who you're meeting. If something doesn't feel right, follow your instincts and leave the scene immediately. The Gillespie Golf Course is hosting a series of free instructional clinics for veterans from Friday, September 28th to Friday, October 26th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. This is a partnership between Greensboro Parks and Recreation's Adaptive and Inclusive Recreation Unit and PGA HOPE. Space is limited and registration is required. Gillespie will hold an informational meeting about the clinics at 1 p.m. on Friday, September 14th at the golf course, which is located at 306 East Florida Street. This PGA HOPE program was designed to teach military veterans of any ability adaptive techniques to introduce them to the game or to get them back on the golf course. These sessions are taught by PGA professionals. The season will end on November 2nd with a trip to Top Golf. For more information or to register, contact Ricardo Hannon at 336-373-2626. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. Hi, I'm Laura Watson, registered dietitian with Cone Health Nutrition and Diabetes Education. There are a lot of mixed messages out there about healthy eating, so today we're going to unpack some do's and don'ts about healthy eating and how to make smart food choices. Because there are so many mixed messages about health and nutrition, um, it can be very confusing. Do be very selective about what you believe about health and nutrition. Do make sure that your information is coming from a licensed nutrition professional and that they are credentialed to give you that nutrition advice. Do be very wary of any fad diets. 95% of diets do not work. They are unsuccessful in the long term and cause weight regain. So do follow a balanced diet with a variety of different things and do include different types of food groups. We want to follow the general my plate recommendations that incorporate a variety of different things, grains and proteins, and vegetables, fruits, and dairy products. 
Unless there is a medical reason why you need to avoid a certain food group, do not restrict your intake of any major food group. When we're talking about grains, we want to choose whole grains. So that includes things like oatmeal and whole wheat cereals, quinoa, whole wheat crackers, okay? What we're looking for, guys, is in the ingredients list, we're looking for whole grains. So the very first ingredient should be whole. It could be whole wheat, it could be whole oat, it could be whole quinoa, it could be whole rice, but what we want to do is have the first word be whole, that's gonna give you the most fiber and the most B vitamins. When we're talking about fats, we wanna choose heart healthy, unsaturated fats. That's gonna be things like olive oil, or your Smart Balance or pomace spread. These are made from vegetable-based spreads, so they are not going to have any saturated or trans fat that increase your heart risk. We wanna stay away from your saturated and trans fats. Now, most food companies have, have taken trans fats out of their products or have marketed that there's no trans fats, but it can be misleading. So in this product, it says that there's no trans fats, but if you look at the ingredients list, they can be hidden and they're called hydrogenated oils. And those is just a tricky word for trans fat. So we do want to avoid those types of products and stick with more of the heart healthy liquid type things when we're doing our cooking and our seasoning. For your meats, we want to choose meats that have less marbling on them. So those are the white spots. So we want to choose things like um, poultry and fish more often, lots of brightly colored fruits and vegetables. So fresh, um, frozen without sauce, Canned is fine as long as you dump out that um, the liquid that's in the can and wash that off because that's really high in sodium. When we are eating, we want to practice mindful eating. So it's not just what you eat, but it's how you eat when we're talking about being healthy and making healthy eating choices. So a lot of us today are very, very busy and a lot of times we eat more than what our bodies actually need when we're eating so quickly. So intuitive eating means sitting down at a table, turning off the TV, putting away your tablet, putting away the computer or the work, and taking a break to actually enjoy your meal. Take smaller bites. Savor that food that you're eating. Taste it. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it spicy? Does it need some salt? Do you even really like what you're eating? Make sure that you're actually enjoying that. Chew your food slowly. Put your fork down in between bites. Take a sip of your beverage in between bites. Make the meal last at least 20 or 30 minutes as it takes 20 minutes for the signal from your stomach to reach your brain and tell you that you're full. As you're eating, check in with yourself mentally and see where you are in your fullness cues. As you're getting comfortably full, stop. Make sure that you are getting adequate hydration as well because sometimes we feel like we're hungry when we're actually thirsty. So keep your bottle of water with you at all times and take sips of it throughout the day so that you can stay hydrated and focused. I hope you found these tips helpful. For more information, please visit us at conehealth.com slash healthy eating. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Laura Watson. The Smith Senior Center is celebrating a milestone. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Construction on the Atlantic and Yadkin Greenway pedestrian bridge between Cotswold Terrace and Lake Brant Road is complete. The Greenway is now open for walkers, runners, and cyclists. The Greenway was rerouted in September 2017, while the North Carolina Department of Transportation built the 170-foot pedestrian bridge that takes the Greenway over the newest section of the Greensboro Urban Loop. The bridge will restore a direct connection between the Battleground Parks District and City Watershed Trails. In honor of National Senior Center Month, the Mabel D. Smith Senior Center will celebrate its 20th anniversary with a free open house and holistic health and wellness fair. The event will take place on Thursday, September 13th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Activities will highlight the center's year-round offerings, which cater to anyone ages 55 and older.
The center is located at 2401 Fairview Street. Wellness Fair participants will be able to tour the center, use the equipment in the fitness room with the assistance of a personal trainer, participate in various demonstrations, and talk with exhibitors who specialize in holistic wellness products and services. There will also be free health screenings, goodie bags, door prizes, and refreshments. The Smith Senior Center provides a fitness room, indoor pool, gymnasium, activity rooms, lounge, outdoor bocce courts, horseshoe pits, and a garden. The center also offers innovative programs and fitness classes such as low-impact aerobics, cardio sculpt, better balance, chair yoga, boot camp, mat yoga, and water aerobics. For more information, call the center at 336-373-7564. The application deadline is near for those interested in being a vendor for the 2018 North Carolina A&T Aggie Fan Fest. Vendors have until 5 p.m. on Friday, September 14th to submit their application. The festival will take place November 2nd through November 4th at the historic War Memorial Stadium located at 510 Yanceyville Street. The Greensboro Parks and Recreation's Special Events Office continues to make this annual event one of the top festivals in the triad. North Carolina A&T Aggie Fan Fest is the largest city-managed special event in Greensboro, entertaining more than 50,000 people during North Carolina A&T State University's homecoming weekend. This year, the festival producers have added more family-friendly entertainment, along with musical performances and a visit from the North Carolina A&T Marching Band, all made possible by WNAA 90.1 The Voice. Aggie Fan Fest also features more than 100 vendors of art, food, and fashions. Vendor applications are posted on the special events website, or printed copies are in the office located at Suite 101 at the Greensboro Cultural Arts Center at 200 North Davy Street. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on Chad Husky, creator of Chad's Carolina Corn. Chad Husky's road to food entrepreneurship started with ambitions to be a professional musician, then took a sharp turn away from the family furniture distribution business and nearly ended in a career in information technology. But Chad went soul searching when he realized he was tired of solving other people's problems all the time. That's when he landed on gourmet popcorn. Undeterred by his lack of experience in the food industry, Chad started making batches in a kitchenette in a building that housed his father's furniture showroom. Chad's Carolina corn recipes range from savory to sweet. The business grew faster than Chad had hoped. By chance, he met the owner of Carolina Fine Snacks, a Greensboro-based snack food manufacturer who was able to provide some much-needed advice on turning the business into a full professional operation. Chad's popcorn is sold across the South and Western U.S. Locally, it's available at Best Way, Whole Foods, Lowe's Foods, and at PTI Airport gift shops. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. The storm damage in East Greensboro is being repaired one property at a time. We'll get a progress report from Community Housing Solutions coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. 
Community Housing Solutions is coming to the rescue of homeowners who experienced damage to their property as a result of the April 2018 tornado. Joining me now to tell us about the home repair process and how it's going is Gene Brown. He is the president and executive director of the Community Housing Solutions. Hello, Gene. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Carla. Yes. Thanks for being here. So tell me, first of all, what is Community, community Housing Solutions and what do you do? Yes, Community Housing Solutions is a local nonprofit organization. Uh, we actually changed our name five years ago to Community Housing Solutions, so some of the viewers may not be as familiar with us, but we are all about preserving home ownership for families that live in Guilford County. And we do that through our skilled construction staff working with volunteers from the community. Um, we work with folks that own their home that may not be able to financially or physically do the work themselves and we engage volunteers and our staff in making homes warmer, drier, and safer. We do about 165 home repairs a year within Guilford County. Um, there currently is a waiting list because of the tornado that you referenced. Um, that has uh, reprioritized some of the repairs we're doing this year, so there's a little bit of a waiting list before services are available, but we're all about preserving homes for people that own their homes in the community. 165 homes a year is very impressive. Um, you've played a very vital role in helping to recover the homes that were damaged during the tornado. So tell me about that in terms of how you all have been uh, hands-on. Yeah, uh, the very first week, April 15th, when the tornado hit East Greensboro, that week following um, Community Housing Solutions and a number of other local nonprofits in the community, um, there was an initial push in the first few weeks to do tarping of roofs and boarding up windows, really trying to secure the properties before rain and other things came about. Um, so Community Housing Solutions, Habitat for Humanity, the Greensboro Housing Coalition, many other nonprofits in the community were serving in those first few weeks, helping with those immediate emergency needs. And then at that point we paused to let those homeowners and those families that had insurance file their claims, um, let folks, uh, once FEMA was approved and came into town, file for FEMA assistance, uh, which ended the early part of July. And so those folks that had insurance um, or were able to get assistance, we wanted them to um, go through the process of getting repairs. Okay, so how many homeowners have actually contacted your organization directly to seek assistance with repairs? Yeah. Um, since our organization did the largest number of home repairs, our family services coordinator, Linda Hunter Hopkins, was the point person for folks that were not able to get assistance, as I mentioned, through insurance or other sources. And so we've had so far 43 homeowners that either did not have insurance or were underinsured or um, did not qualify for FEMA. <clears throat> and there, we're currently in the process of matching them up with a nonprofit organization and um, we've actually started some of the work. We've completed four home repairs, have five more in process, so about 25% of that list should be shortly off that list. But the remaining 30 will be worked on over the next um, two to three months. We're hoping that by the end of December we will have gone through that list of 43. Okay, that's wonderful, and I know those families are most appreciative. You have a, a very big event that you do each year called Paint the Town. Tell me about that, and when will that take place this year? Yeah, um, Paint the Town, just a little bit of history. It's the eighth year that we've done Paint the Town. Um, every fall, we pick a different neighborhood in the community in Greensboro that we focus on to do external home repairs, things like painting the outside of the house, doing hand railings, uh, maybe doing some light yard work or landscaping. This year though, when the tornado hit, and the homeowner's insurance won't cover just painting if it's, other than if the siding's been torn off, we really decided to try to, how could we help to help beautify and assist folks within the tornado damaged neighborhoods? So we're real excited on Saturday, September 22nd, we have more than 235 volunteers coming out from um, 16 different businesses, faith organizations, civic organizations that will work alongside our skilled staff to um, help repair and paint the outside of um, those homes in the tornado neighborhoods, primarily Dudley Heights, Lincoln Heights, Cottage Grove area, and a few other neighborhoods. Okay, that's wonderful. September 22nd, people need to mark their calendar. Do you need more volunteers or you're set? We actually, I, I was speaking with uh, Melinda, who's our volunteer com community, uh, community engagement coordinator. This is the first year we've actually had to turn away some volunteer groups. We're trying to reschedule them for later in the year. Okay 
because we've reached our capacity for that particular yeah. event. Okay, um, so you'll be painting quite a few homes that weekend. Yes. Now, as far as the tornado repairs, if someone's listening to this and did not know Community Housing Solutions is an option, is it still an option for them to contact you for assistance? Yes, um, we are trying to uh, get out into the neighborhoods and make sure the information is, is really distributed to everyone so that they're aware of services available but um, would love to have if there's someone out there that sees this piece and still has home repairs needed. They have to be a homeowner um, and it has to be due to the tornado, but if they still have repairs that are needed that they weren't able to get done through insurance or other sources, please have them call Community Housing Solutions. Linda Hunter Hopkins is our Family Services Coordinator. She's the individual that would kind of do like a triage and gather some information and then we would try to line that up with either Community Housing Solutions or Habitat or East Greensboro Now to do the home repair over the coming months. Wonderful. Well, Jean, thank you for giving us an update on the home repairs that you're doing, the ones that you're scheduled to continue doing. We appreciate all that your agency is doing to restore normalcy to our tornado survivors. Oh, it's, it's been an incredible experience the last six months to see the community rise up yes. in so many ways from donors to volunteers to other agencies and it's um, really been an experience as difficult as it was for people in the yes. community. It was great to see the response. Hence, yes. hashtag Greensboro Strong. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you and do come back and see us. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN, and we also stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on level two of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. City Arts and Joy Movement Dance are partnering to offer Uplift Girls, which is an open discussion group where girls ages 9 to 18 can talk about their life experiences. The eight-week program begins on Monday, September 17th. Meetings will be held every Monday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. in the Called Clue Multicultural Arts Center located at 1700 Orchard Street. The registration fee is $25 and girls can register online. Each week, the group will participate in workshops centered around developing skills in the following core areas, self-care, entrepreneurship, movement, and global citizenship. The young ladies will examine essential questions such as who am I and who do I want to become. They will participate in dance and yoga classes as well. The project goal of Uplift Girls is to ele elevate from limited choices to limitless opportunity and to become leaders in the community. For more information, send an email to Program Director Alexandra Joy Warren. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hi, this is Jody. Join us for an action-packed weekend. This Friday, head over to Triad Stage for opening night of Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. Solve the mystery before time runs out. Ten strangers trapped on a dangerous island each have a secret. Match your wits against the master of suspense to catch the killer before they are gone. Come celebrate the official unveiling and join the cast and company at the post-show party with food and drink in the lobby. To purchase tickets or for more information, go to triadstage.org. 
Greensboro Comic Con returns this Saturday and Sunday at the Greensboro Marriott downtown. Prepare for an action-packed event full of comics, cosplay, toys, gaming, and more. Featuring your favorite local creators, professional guests, and the best pop culture vendors around. For times, tickets, and additional information, visit GreensboroComicCon.com. This Sunday, bring the kids over to the Greensboro Children's Museum for Sunday Fun Day, where you can enjoy half-price Sundays. From 1 to 5 p.m., there will be $5 admission per person. The Greensboro Children's Museum is a hands-on, interactive museum for children and their families. For more information and a list of upcoming events, go to gcmuseum.com. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out more about events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 22 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Today we place the spotlight on GTA for being awarded a federal grant of nearly $2 million to purchase new battery electric buses. The 2018 Low or No Emission Low No Program grant from the Federal Transit Administration will assist with replacing aging diesel buses in the GTA fleet that has exceeded its life expectancy. The funding will cover the cost of purchasing three 40-foot battery electric buses to add to the 10 units currently on order from Proterra, a leader in the design and manufacture of zero-emission heavy-duty vehicles. Battery electric buses are quickly becoming the alternative fuel vehicle of choice used by leading transit systems around the country. An electric motor provides propulsion of the bus with power drawn from an array of onboard batteries. These batteries also provide power for climate control and onboard amenities such as an announcement system and USB charging ports for passengers. Greensboro is the first city to bring battery electric transit to the state of North Carolina, making GTA a transit leader. It's fitting that with this most recent low-no grant, Greensboro will now be home to one of the largest electric bus fleets in the southeast. On the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout-out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout-out. This week's shout-out goes to the Water Resources Department. The results are in, and the Water Resources team has officially named its Water Drop mascot, Valley Drop. Over the past several months, the Water Resources staff solicited name suggestions online, in person, and at various community events. They received more than 150 entries, which were narrowed down to the top 25. Water Resources staff voted on the top three names, which were Big Blue, Mr. H2O, and Belly Drop. The people who submitted the top three name suggestions will be contacted to redeem their prize. Valley Drop holds special meaning since it's in honor of Lavelle Donnell, who served as an environmental educator in the Water Resources Department for 18 years. Lavelle lived the mission of the Water Resources Department and worked tirelessly to serve the city of Greensboro until she passed away in 2017. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.